In this video, we'll be covering some of the basics of arrays. This will be useful if you were just introduced to arrays and want a better understanding of them, or if you just need a quick review. We'll cover what an array is, how to create one, adding elements, and how to print the contents of the array. We'll be talking about arrays in Java, but most of these concepts will apply directly to C++ and other languages as well. So what is an array? An array is an object that contains a fixed number of values of a single type. So you've probably learned how to create a variable for a single integer. In this case, we've created a variable called one number. Its type is int and the value associated with it is seven. All an array is, is like a list of many integers. So the variable many numbers will contain all of these integers. We can also create arrays for different data types, such as strings, chars, and doubles. Now let's talk about how we create arrays. The first thing we'll do is declare them. Here's an example of how we can declare one integer. And when we are declaring, we are telling the compiler that this variable, one number, will contain an integer at some point in our program. So all we do to declare an integer array is add square brackets after the type. You can put your square brackets at the end of the variable like you do in C++. It's just not as conventional in Java. So most people will recommend putting the square brackets after the type. Now we're going to talk about instantiating an array. When we instantiate, we're actually setting aside some memory for the entire array. And remember, an array must contain a fixed number of values. By using the new keyword and the type followed by another square bracket containing the array size, we allocate some memory to contain five integers. In this example, we're keeping track of five students' exam scores. We need to remember Java uses zero-based indexing, so for an array of length five, our indices are labeled zero, one, two, three, and four. And we haven't added any elements to this array yet, so it's automatically initialized with zeros. Also, if we were to create an array of strings, our array is filled with null values. So we're going to talk about adding elements to our array. Going back to our exam scores example, on the left side you see we have our data, the exam scores, and we want to add the scores to the array. We can insert a single element at a time. So how this works is we type the variable name and after it we use the square brackets but this time in the brackets is the index we're adding an element to in the array. So you can see that our array at index zero now contains the value 98. And we can do this for every index. So we don't have to do this in any specific order. You can change the value in your array at any location whenever you want. Or if you have the data already, you can add to your array during your instantiation as well. So creating the array using curly braces and a comma separated list initializes the array to be in this case of size five and it creates it with our scores already added. Now that we have our array of exam scores initialized, we can talk about how to print them out nicely. On the left side is our desired output. We want to number the exams from one to five and have the score printed after. So one thing we could do is write five different print statements, and this will work just fine, but it looks clunky, and if you had to print hundreds or thousands of grades like this, it would not be fun. So. As a programmer, if you find yourself writing the same thing over and over again, it's your opportunity to think of a more efficient way to do it. So instead, what you can do is create a for loop, and this will produce the same output, and I'll walk you through what's going on in this for loop. So we're setting our index equal to zero at first, and we'll be iterating through while i is less than the length of the array. 
And remember, the length of our array is five. So I will be zero, one, two, three, and four because we'll be incrementing i once we reach the end of our for loop. So for the first pass through of our for loop, we're printing exam score i plus one because our scores are labeled one through five. The colon. And finally, our data, which is the exam score at i. And we've told our for loop to go through five iterations. So this is what our final output will look like. So a quick recap of what we've learned. An array is an object that contains a fixed number of values of a single type. So we can't add strings to an array of integers or vice versa. It has to be of the same type. We learned how to declare, instantiate, and initialize an array. We can add a single element to an array, or we can initialize our array with elements when it's first created. And we learned how to print our array using a for loop.